Hello everyone. Myself Rida Sadaqat and I have a bachelor's in dentistry and a master's in public health and I have been associated with my Aussie topic since the past one and a half years and academic writing as well. Today's topic is a very very common and a very very basic topic which is the types of wounds that we see as nursing professionals, as clinicians, as medical professionals, as surgical professionals as well in our patients and the types of case studies that we get based on the types of wounds in patients and how what are the basics of managing any and every type of wound and what should be done in case of an emergency that a wound comes to us so we're going to discuss all of these aspects today in this particular presentation so let's begin by defining first of all what is a wound a wound is any type of abrasion or a damage or a breakage to the integrity or the surface of the skin so basically when there is a breakage in the surface of the skin it is known as a wound it can occur due to multiple cases it could be due to accidents it could be due to any skin tear any minor abrasion it could be a penetrating wound where a blow has been uh by the body any underlying disease such as eczema or psoriasis skin conditions can develop that can turn into wounds or it could be accidents like burns or a paper cut or a skin tear or a surgical cut or a surgical wound or any kind of skin condition it could be any and every kind of damage or breakage to the integrity or the epithelial surface of the skin is known as a wound moving on now there are various types of classifications of wound on the various of um, on the basis of various types of methodologies based on healing time based on the type of wound that the patient has experienced the type of contamination level the visibility of the wound the duration of the wound there are multiple ways of defining and describing the various types of wound and we are going to discuss each one of them one by one first of all it can open or a closed wound an open wound is the one which is exposed underlying tissue or organ to the outside environment for example any penetrating wound for example as we have shown you in the picture here an abrasion a laceration an avulsion avulsion where a part of skin or the wound breaks out breaks out it is visible exposed to the external environment a laceration also which is exposed to the underlying organs or the under internal organs to the outer environment an incision a puncture wound an abrasion also exposes the internal organs underlying tissues and organs to the external environment to the outside environment so it is an open wound which is completely open and absolutely visible whereas closed wounds are the ones which are occur without any exposure to the underlying tissue and the organs and it's all hidden inside for example here as they have shown second picture this one is of a closed wound in which the uh, damage has happened internally and it is visible externally but there is no uh, exposure of the underlying tissue to the outer environment acute or chronic a wound can be classified as acute or chronic depending on the healing time acute wounds are those that can heal without any complications in a predicate the amount of time there is chronic wound or the one that have been occurring or have taken a relatively longer time to heal for example a diabetic foot it takes a relatively longer time to heal or it does not heal it moves on into the necrotic stage etc so that is a chronic wound so there are various types of chronic wounds which could be pressure injuries diabetic ulcers and others as well pressure injuries will include bed sores pressure sores or cubitus ulcers they can uh, cause a pressure or a shearing force on the skin and the people who are uh, more prone to these chronic wounds are with limited mobility due to any medical illness or unable to walk or because of their positioning unable to move their body part to a different position basically bed sores also that occur because of continuous shearing or the <clears throat> pressure force that is uh, that is uh, being applied on the skin or on the bony protrusion on the bony parts of the hips either or the buttocks elbows the back of the head the back of the heel and the rear hissa of the knees as well so these pressure sores they develop because of limited movement or absolutely zero movement of the patient usually occurs in patients who are bedridden with chronic diseases and limited mobilities so in those patients these expo- these portions of the body they are exposed to a shearing force of the underlying bed which causes these pressure injuries to occur over time diabetic ulcers are ulcers that generally occur on the feet and are a result of changes to nerves and circulation in the body caused by diabetes it includes neuropathic ischemic and neuro ischemic injuries neuropathic when the nerves are involved ischemic when the blood supply completely 
get stopped and neuro ischemic are the ones where the combination of both neuro and ischemic injuries occurs in diabetic ulcers now diabetic ulcer develops when the patient is diabetic and has high blood glucose there is a little injury on the foot as we have shown in the image here the first image is that of a diabetic ulcer where the little injury if it occurs on the patient or to the patient on his or his or her foot due to diabetes it can lead to the formation of a complete diabetic ulcer because of lack of immune system and lack of proper handling of the wounds and lack of proper immunity in the diabetic patient so these wounds they can become greater and they can cause um, nerves and circulation in the body both of these things can get affected it could be a neuropathic wound where the nerves are affected and there is no pain and the ischemic wound when there is blood supply has been affected completely and neuro ischemic wound a combination of both it can further lead to ischemia and necrosis also of the foot wound can develop into greater ischemia and cause necrosis of the entire region of the of the wound the chronic wound again types of acute wounds or generally types of wounds clean or contaminated wounds can also be classified on the basis if they are clean or contaminated clean wounds are those that do not have any foreign material or debris inside them this contaminated wounds are infected wounds that might have dirt bacteria foreign products etc all inside the wound they can be used as an example of an open or a closed wound depending on its current stage As I told you in the previous slide, there was a pressure ulcer that I showed you in the image. A pressure wound, pressure sores, could be open or closed depending on the stage. Initially, it is a closed wound, and after it gets contaminated, it becomes an open wound. If it worsens and reaches the diabetic stage and becomes a chronic wound, then it becomes a contaminated wound due to external bacteria, dirt, foreign market, foreign material, etc., and it becomes an open wound as well, depending on the chronicity of the wound. So, moving on, internal and external wound. Internal wounds are the ones that are happening internally inside the body. They could be due to either impaired circulation, nervous system function loss, neuropathy, or medical illness, or it could be due to decreased supply of blood. as well internally oxygen or other nutrients where external wounds are the wounds that can be seen outside and they are due to an outside force or trauma that is caused by penetration of it's or non penetrating trauma as well so the other type of penetrating and non penetrating wounds non penetrating wounds could be the ones that are due to blunt trauma or friction abrasions lacerations bruises concussions it is an open wound but it is not a wound in which the blunt trauma or the cause of trauma has penetrated inside the bone and the skin They are non-penetrating ones, but they are open wounds. They are exposing the internal tissue to external environment. There is no penetration that has happened inside the body or inside the skin. This thing. There are basic abrasion, lacerations, bruises, concussions, as we have shown in the diagram. It is a concussion on the temporal part of the frontal part and the temporal part of the person's brain. Now, penetrating wound is the one in which an external object has completely penetrated inside the full thickness of the skin, and it has gone inside completely and cut it. are the result of trauma and break through the full thickness of the skin including stab wounds cuts and surgical wounds including stabbing wounds cut wounds and surgical wounds in which the entire cause of uh, trauma has penetrated entirely through the full thickness of the skin and it has caused complete breaking through the entire thickness of the skin and has reached the internal organ so that is a penetrating wound now we have discussed all types of classifications for wounds penetrating non penetrating acute chronic open post internal external pain contaminated most of the types of wounds and wound types have been discussed here now we will discuss some basics of wound management that can be applied to any and every type of wound for managing the wound the so wound management will include hemostasis cleaning of the wound analgesia skin closure dressing and follow up basically there are four or five basic principles that are available or that are we practice for managing any and every kind of wound which will include the following hemostasis is a process that will basically cause the bleeding to stop in most wounds hemostasis will be spontaneous in case of significant injury or laceration of internal vessels you will have to apply external pressure elevation or suture the situation or apply a tourniquet to stop the bleeding and aid in hemostasis wound cleaning is important for reducing infection and promoting healing these are five aspects of wound cleaning disinfecting the skin around the wound with the antiseptic that is alcohol or detergents decontaminating the wound basically by removing any foreign bodies debriding the wound any devitalized tissue any dead tissue that is there you have to remove that then you have to irrigate the wound with saline to remove any 
obvious contamination then we have to give antibiotics for any high risk wounds or signs of infection and follow local antibiotic guidelines in terms of puncture wound open fractures etc whatever the antibiotics that need to be given to prevent further decontamination and prevent any bacterial infection etc moving on analgesia will follow for a humane and easier closure for the wound because infiltration of a local anesthetic will help in reducing the pain and the maximum level of lidocaine that you can give is 3 mg per kg and adrenaline that can give is 10 mg 7 mg per kg and you cannot apply both of them for appendages for fingers etc it will be for a larger wound and infiltration will have to be given by an la skin closure is basically aiding the wound healing after you have clean and completely debrided the wound provided the supposed analgesia that has to be given to the patient to prevent or reduce the pain that the patient is suffering from then we move on to skin closing skin closer skin closure we basically involve closing the skin and where the edges of the wound can be manually opposed to each other and completely shut down you can either use sutures which are the most common example for any laceration for any deep dermal wound the locations that are prone to flexion tension wetting all of these places we basically use suturing otherwise staples can be used for some scalp wounds and uh, the two other kinds of uh, wound healing skin closure method are skin adhesive strips that are suitable if no risk factors are present for infection and tissue adhesive glue can be used for small lacerations with easily opposable edges a popular choice in pediatrics Now moving on wound dressing and follow up wound dressing correct dressing of the wound will reduce infection and contamination when applying a wound dressing to any non infected laceration the first layer should be non adherent saline soaked gauze then you have to apply an absorbent material to absorb the wound exudate that is releasing and then a soft gauze top tape to keep the dressing in place so there are three parts a non adherent thing is saline soaked gauze that is going to be applied on the non infected after removing and completely cleaning it up Then an absorbent material that will absorb the wound exudate, and then a soft gauze tape to secure the dressing in place. Tetanus prophylaxis is usually given for up to date for tetanus immunization status that has to be checked for most and every kind of wounds. And following the initial wound management, for further follow up, you have to take medical attention if there are any kind of infection, any pus, any drainage, any pain, any swelling, any fever, any associated sign. any temperature and simple analgesia paracetamol etc and keeping the wound dry as much as possible any sutures or adhesive strips need to be removed after the specified time and the dressing have to be also changed in specified time even if wearing a waterproof dressing the wound has to be kept dry otherwise or if you are doing bed dressing that is also a methodology for treating certain kinds of uh, diseases or certain kinds of uh, chronic injuries or burn injuries or burn wounds there a hydrophilic uh, or a water absorbent uh, hydro uh, related dressing is also given hydrogel dressing is also given or an alginate dressing is also given to promote healing provide more water and to provide more uh, and in certain cases it has to be kept absolutely dry to promote healing in the case of healing is being promoted it is dependent basically on the type of injury that we are dealing with so the type of dressing will change based on that so i hope you understood the entire process of wound and uh, wound healing today uh, and the types of wounds that we get across that we can face the cases that we can see the clinical cases and the types of management and wound healing that we need to follow in cases like that so i hope to see you again another day another day with another discussion thank you so much